Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. My name is Yuri Vessels, and it's such an honor to be here all the way from South Africa. Traveled 32 hours to get here, but it's such an amazing experience. And I am extremely excited to share what we at The Invigilator uh, do. So I think just a quick bit of context is that our company started off in 2020 when COVID struck and the whole world got, got turned upside down. And we in academia, I myself have quite a, quite a long extensive background in academia, realized that there's a lot that needs to be done to open up education through means of access, accessible technology. Uh, and we realized back at the time that many students and learners across K-12 to higher education have got a big issue with regards to uh, software solutions that are expected to use, but are very difficult to actually deploy practically and in real life. And what we started doing in 20, uh, 2020 is we were a passionate team that got together uh, and we started developing uh, a revolutionary proctoring solution. Uh, we started off initially with proctoring and we've uh, subsequently branched out into a number of different products that I'm going to demo to you today. It's going to be a very practical uh, a demonstration and I'd like for you to see as much as possible of what we offer. But our philosophy is that we would like to assist institutions to open up education through means of online learning uh, by making use of our solutions. We've also got a number of solutions that can be used for in-venue type of assessments and assignments uh, and I'm going to start off by just explaining that. So as I mentioned, we are making use of AI to ensure that the uh, the normal limitations that students are facing can be addressed with regards to what type of devices they would need, uh, how much internet they're going to need, and then specifically for the institutions, how much it would cost to make use of our solutions. So back in 2020, we started off with a mobile solution first because in Africa, where we're from, uh, we realized that not all students then had access to laptops or uh, computers. And we wanted to start off with devices that all students have got access to. So initially, we launched a mobile application. Subsequently, we've built a PC and a web app as well that we're rolling out. At the moment, we have got uh, about 750,000 active users on our platform. And we've managed to really take an extremely large portion of academic institutions in South Africa and Africa online. So ladies and gentlemen, if I can start off my demo by quickly showing you what it would typically look like. So you would see all of the data that I'm going to show you now is data that we collected through means of our mobile phone solution, where students need between five and six megabytes of data per assessment to be proctored. And what we do is firstly, we aim to ensure the identity of the student that is sitting for the assessment to ensure that we have the right student there and that I'm not writing on behalf of my friend. And we do that through means of facial recognition where we are taking a couple of photos during the assessment and we then compare that back to a master file photo that we have on file. And therefore we have the ability to ensure that it is the correct student that is sitting for the specific assessment. We also take microphone recordings the moment that speech is detected. Uh, we put that through a speech detection algorithm and we have the ability to transcribe and even translate that, uh, that speech should it be in a foreign language or a language other than English. We have the ability to ask students to take custom photos. So if you would like them to take photos of a specific assessment environment or of a further identity document, you can do so very easily. We've got a built-in PDF scanner into our mobile application, and there we have the ability to scan handwritten scripts into the application as well. We can then also track the GPS locations of students to ensure that students that are writing remote and online assessments are not sitting in close proximity of one another. Then, ladies and gentlemen, when we get to our PC solution that we've rolled out about three years ago, uh, this is where students do have access to, to, to laptops or, or, or computers. And what we do there, we use the same AI as in our mobile app to ensure that it is the correct student sitting for the assessment. So you will see, ladies and gentlemen, that in this specific example, this is the student in question. However, if you have a look at some of the examples here, um, it is evident that in this case, this student's mother was sitting behind the computer uh, and trying to perform the assessment on, on his behalf. So there you will see, we immediately started recording the moment that we realized that this was not the correct student. Ladies and gentlemen, then over and above the videos that we can take, we also have the ability to monitor the student's screens. So that is to ensure that students are not accessing unauthorized resources, being uh, Google, ChatGPT, any of the AI generative tools, uh, web WhatsApp, 
uh, PDF documents. We've got a large list of documents that, can, that we can detect the moment that the student accesses that. And I'm going to just show you how we can do that. What we can also do is uh, through the means of, of uh, automated photos, we also take random photos uh, automatically, and we then have the ability to detect certain objects. And in this photo, you can see that we managed to detect a mobile phone in the specific student's hand. As I mentioned, we also do uh, screen capture analysis. And on this analysis, we have the ability to identify unauthorized resources. For example, on the screenshot that I'm opening up, you will see that this was an LMS-based assessment where the student had to uh, perform the assessment in the LMS. And the question said, discuss any four communication mechanisms and uh, explain how each mechanism may be used. And there you will see the student opened up a Google tab at the top of the screen. We immediately flagged it. We took a photo of it, and you have the evidence to use as an educator in the event that you have to, uh, have to go to a disciplinary case. If I just have a look at a couple more examples, so you will see, yeah, I've got another screen capture that failed. So this, we can see this student access ChatGPT. The moment that we detected ChatGPT on the screen, we immediately flagged it, and you as the educator have got access to the evidence that you might need. Maybe if we look, have a look at a last example here, you will see that in this case, we have detected the student accessing web WhatsApp. Um, and if I have a look as the screenshot opens up, the student was copying and pasting the answer into WhatsApp, uh, a, a communication platform uh, commonly used uh, in, in South Africa. So by doing this, we have the ability, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that students do not need three or 400 megabytes of data that they need to upload over the course of a proctored exam because we have the ability to only look for the, the, the bad data, if I can call it that. So the moment that we detect a student doing something that is not allowed during an assessment, we take that, that data, we save it, and that uploads for the educator to, to then uh, check afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, then subsequently, we've also gone and we've in, introduced a, a plagiarism detection tool into our software. And this is where we have the ability to take all of the answers submitted for a specific assessment or assignment, and we compare those to one another. And we have the ability to then highlight gross similarities between multiple students that have performed the same assessment. And what we do, ladies and gentlemen, we do not just give you an overall similarity percentage. We actually look at those responses on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence basis. And what we do is we then detect the number of sentences where there are six or more consecutive words that are exactly the same between multiple students. And we then add up those examples. So in this specific case, you will see we found 43 matches. So there were 43 matches between two students. And if I open it up, you will see that um, we can immediately give you an extract of all 43 of those sentences. But not only do we give you the extract, we also put the scripts next to one another. And by doing that, as the educator, you have the ability to compare those scripts with one another. You will also note that our solutions work on both handwritten as well as typed answers. Many of the, the current solutions out there only rely on typed documents, Word documents or PDF documents. We make use of OCR technology to compare any handwritten responses uh, to, 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 to any other scripts that we might have. We also realize that in the K-12 environment, it's also quite very necessary for students uh, to still handwrite their assessments. And therefore, it's important to have solutions that have the ability to cater for that. Um, and that is why we have a built-in PDF scanner in our mobile application to also immediately allow our student to scan their script. So ladies and gentlemen, if you quickly compare these two handwritten, uh, well, th this handwritten and typed responses to one another, you will see that it is word for word the same answer. So these two students have gone and have copied that from one another. Then ladies and gentlemen, uh, last year we launched our groundbreaking AI detection tool. We know that AI is a massive uh, benefit, but also a, a, a big pitfall in, in any academic environment. And what we do with our AI detection tools is we've really gone and thought hard about it based on the academic background that we have. And what we do here is instead of just providing you with an overall likelihood of a document containing AI, we go and you plot these assessments or assignments, and we then check it on a question by question basis. So on the screen in front of you, you will see that each of the questions we, we plot 
We then take the students' answers and we run that, those answers through a number of large language models. And on a question-by-question -question basis, we can provide you with the likelihood that AI was used to generate that specific answer. Ladies and gentlemen, not only do we do that, but we also perform a writing style analysis where we track the student's writing style over all of the assessments that they have performed and that they have submitted assignments or assessments on the invigilator. And there you will be able to see that this is quite complex, but hugely, hugely uh, informative, where we have the ability to go and check a number of things with regards to the writing style and where we can plot how many complex words were used, what the complex word ratio was, what the average sentence length was in, in comparison to what the student would typically use. And we've got a number of parameters that we use to determine whether the submission was in fact in line with the student's own writing style. So ladies and gentlemen, just to conclude, our solutions are really there to provide educators with a tool to open up education through means of online learning as well as in-venue in classroom-based activities and then to also go and provide you with proof in the, in the event that we have to uh, go to a specific disciplinary case. We all understand how important it is to protect the academic integrity of our assessments, our assignments and our qualifications as a whole. And the Invigilator offers that uh, at a nominal fee of $5 per student, per year, unlimited usage. So it's a really affordable solution for both proctoring, plagiarism detection, as well as AI detection. Thank you very much for your time. I see I've run out of time. I've really enjoyed spending the time with you and enjoy your day further.